only is he boxing and making a very, very good job of that, but he also goes into schools to teach children about the dangers of knife crime, which, as Kate said in the introduction, mm. is something you know all about. We'll come to the, the boxing belts and the boxing <laughs> uh, at some point, Richard, because I really want to talk about that. First of all, let's talk about this extraordinary upbringing you had. You grew up on the Aylesbury estate in South East London, uh, which yeah. I think at one time was known as the most notorious estates it really was. in the United really Kingdom. Was. What was it like growing up? Uh, it was very difficult. You can imagine the, the environment, um, low-income housing, the biggest estate in Europe, and everybody, it was like the whole environment, my environment was, was put me at a disadvantage from the very beginning, and everything was limited, you know, uh, my, in terms of, in regards to thinking, and just to believe, believe in that I could actually make something of myself, and I grew up seeing crime, that was, that was norm drug addicts, drug dealers, and that's what we kind of aspired to be because there was nothing better to kind of look, look towards and kind of just aim, aim towards, if you would. So later on, it's like you got to a point where I had to ask myself, do I want to go continue on this type of mm. pathway because it's going to lead to two things. It's going to lead to either death or, or jail. So I just had to kind of just find something to something else to do. And it so did thought, yeah. lead to yeah. death, didn't it? Like, it really unfortunately, did. you really found did. your way out of it. But, but along that path, as a young lad, you chose to join the gangs mm -hmm. and get involved because I don't, I don't know. Was it because from where you stood on the estate, the, the people that had the respect, the people that had the money, the people that could make things happen were the people in the gangs? Yeah, essentially, they had the power. They had... Um, they attracted the, the female attention. They had the female attention. They had the, the they looked apart. The they had the accessories, if you would. And I wanted to, I wanted the same thing. I wanted the power. I wanted the- it's Extremely attractive. Very attractive, very attractive. And, and that's why I kind of found myself spiraling down after making so many wrong decisions and it compounded over, over time. And it led me to that destination before I realized where I was or what path I was on, it was way too late. And I'm very lucky to be here to, to be talking to you today. So this incident we mentioned before where you were stabbed in the chest yep. outside a club, that related to the gangs you were finding yourself increasingly involved in? Yes, today. yes. I mean, that sounds grim. It was, it was. How um, bad was it? How serious was, it was your a, condition? It was a serious stabbing. Um, I was outside a club and me and my friends were congregating and we decided we were just finding the, the next motive. We wanted to go to another party, like a house party. A guy came out and started asking everybody for their phones. And I didn't have a phone at the time, but because of the pride and ego that comes with being from the, that type of background, I said, no, I didn't have a phone, but he still ended up stabbing me. And then he killed me, he stabbed about uh, me and about two others. Everybody he was just coming to people, like, give me your phone. People were giving him. Um, their phones and came to to certain other people and they would they would hesitate. He would just stab them and he ended up stabbing me with the most um, it was the most severe injury. So you end up in hospital fighting yeah. for your life. Was it at that point you said, I've got to find a way out of this. This is not uh, sustainable. Yeah, I think it came just shortly after that. It's just after just sitting down and just analysing everything as a whole and realizing that this lifestyle we're living is it's not gonna it's not beneficial and it's not gonna lead us to to you know, you know major finances and and help and we're gonna end up changing our life completely. So it was just coming to reality of and to mm. terms of things say and just understanding that it's gonna either lead to death or life in prison. So and I didn't want to live like that. Um, my parents were, you know, amazing and they did they did so well to kind of help me and steer me away from that type of path. So it got to a point where I just wanted to make them happy. And from then, that's when the decisions started. I started to make mm. the right decisions. So there's one thing making the decision, thankfully the right decision for you. There's yeah. another thing to actually change your life when you're in that circumstance. How did you begin the process? How did you go about changing? So I think I, think I, would, I would say it's the decisions that I made mm. prior. So because I was making the wrong decisions right. before. And after I started making the right decisions, they compounded over time and led, led me on a path and led me to where I am today. Was it so easy it was to get away from the gang, though? Because these are your mates, these are the people, and there's a lot of respect. Were, th were they willing to let you sort of slowly move away in a different direction, or was that a battle, too? That was a battle. That was a battle in itself, because it got to a point where I had to... I had to kind of say to myself, I need to separate myself from my friends and, and become... Mm. Um, grow. 
grow in all different aspects. Um, being able to speak and articulate myself, that was, it, that was an issue. How did I you thought. learn how to do that? Because you're very articulate now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, I actually listened to LBC for, for a long period of time, um, James O'Brien, and I used to listen to everything that he said, how he articulated me. Because on the street, whether you're with your mates, you would use a lot of street Loads slang. Loads of slang, that's and it. Like, that's what you lived with. So, just, so and listening to a broadcaster like James, a sort of a well-respected broadcaster, was, you were able to sort of work out how you were going to present yourself and how you Absolutely. could explain your position. Absolutely. So it was, it was a few other things, um, going to surrounding myself with the different people, stepping out of my comfort zone, because I would say I was like pretty depressed at one point. I was, I was on this track and I wasn't seeing a lot of results. Mm. And it took a, a long time. And there was times where I wanted to give up or I didn't want to, you know, step up my comfort zone. And I thought, you know what, let me just continue on this path, stepping out. And it got to a point where I just had to listen and observe. I should just be quiet and just understand how this type of um, world is obviously coming from that type of street culture. Yeah. Yeah. And the world of boxing uh, sort of came there as well. And, and with boxing, as, as I've experienced, but you are doing professionally now, comes discipline and respect mm. Major. and, and Major uh, sort of, you know, just the absolute commitment. And what you've managed to achieve is, is amazing. We've got your belts here. Talk us through the belts that you've got in front of us there, um, Richard. So that's the, the Lonsdale, the famous Lonsdale belt. This is the, the, the thinner one, the, the one behind that one, Matt. Just, you pick that one up for us. Yeah, there you go. So you this was the very famous Lonsdale, Lonsdale. belt. Lonsdale. Which is a really gorgeous wow. belt, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? Amazing, amazing, amazing belt. Yeah. And and to, and the one on the table. And uh, the other is the WBA inter, intercontinental title. This amazing. is uh, an amazing um, belt. Um, the first ever belt um, organization that recognizes boxing. It's an incredible. What you I mean, they're amazing belts for an amazing achievement. And on in your hand, I nearly injured you further. You you injured yourself in <laughs> yeah, the fight, ended, didn't you? I injured myself in the in the, in the fight, but you know, it just comes with it with a package. You just keep going, <laughs> yeah, keep on keep, battling, keep on going. Well, look, yeah. what you're doing is incredible, and going into the schools and teaching about knife crime oh, is a real driver for you. I think yeah. because um, coming from that background, I didn't really have anybody to kind of give me that yeah. advice, so I kind of took it upon myself to... Oh, you're going to be making a huge thing. difference, Richard. Best of luck for the future. Thank you very it's much. It's fabulous man. to meet you, and best of luck with the healing of the wrist as well. Thank you very much.